While still considered a relatively new technology, laser eye surgery is constantly evolving and improving its effectiveness. And here to tell us what is new in laser surgery from the Columbus Medical Association is our health team ophthalmologist, Dr. Alice Epitropoulos. Dr. Epitropoulos, thank you for joining us again today. And for new patients who are considering laser surgery, what should they know? Well, LASIK has become the most popular medical procedure performed in the country. In fact, over a million people will have LASIK this year. Over the past year, new technologies and new advances has really made this procedure safer with uh, more improved outcomes. Um, some lasers have um, had an FDA-approved um, uh, procedure called mixed astigmatism, which is when the eye has characteristics of both nearsightedness and farsightedness combined with astigmatism which has really expanded the amount of people that we can correct. Mm -hmm. We also are able to treat larger optical zones, which has dramatically reduced the incidence of glare and halos at nighttime. Which is what we've heard most about as exactly. far as side effects. Right, right. right. And then there's also custom uh, ablation, which has, was just recently approved, which has allowed us to correct people that are complaining of, of halos and ghosting and blurred vision due to previous complications. Doctor, who makes the best candidate for the surgery and what are the risks involved? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think that uh, people that have the highest success rate have realistic expectations and know, you know, what their vision's going to be like afterwards and are also clearly um, understanding of what the potential side effects are afterwards. Not everybody is a candidate for laser vision correction. I, um, the eligibility depends on the amount of correction, the uh, corneal curvature and the thickness and the health status. Certain conditions may disqualify you as a candidate. Those include pregnancy, diabetes, autoimmune disorders, immunosuppression, herpetic eye disease, keratoconus, which is an abnormal thinning of the cornea, and people that form keloids, which is excessive scarring. So what should people look for in a doctor to do this surgery for them when they go shopping around? Um, I think the temptation that many people have is looking at price. But when it comes to your vision, I, th I don't think this should be a real high priority. Um, if you are considering refractive surgery, the best advice is to do your homework. Uh, look at the surgeon's experience. Uh, check their credentials, including board certification. Uh, be familiar with the style of care that he or she provides because each surgical practice is different. Um, check to see if your surgeon's going to be involved in the preoperative evaluation and the post-op care. Also, check to see if the surgeon and the laser center keep up to date with the latest technology and equipment. And also, confirm whether the price includes follow-up care and possible enhancement. Do your homework first. Absolutely. Dr. Dr. Travels, thanks for joining us. We'll thanks, see you in about a month. Thank you. Well, the sudden